Hello, I'm Andrew Brace, consultant editor at Dog World, and I'm here at the 2011 Blackpool Championship Dog Show, and I'm speaking to Bill Brown Cole, who has the honour of judging best in show at this year's show. And it's your first appointment at this level, Bill, I think. Yes, it is. Taking a long time to come. Yes. When did, you, again. when did you first start giving CCs? Uh, 1971, 40 19 years ago. Mm. They can't accuse you of being pushy, can they? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've got a very interesting pedigree in more ways than one, though, Bill, haven't you? Because your father was a celebrated fox terrier man. Yes. And he founded the Travella Kennel. Yes, in the early 1920s. 1920s. Yeah. I've got vague recollections of him um, when I was a kid. Always very smart and dapper, something that you've clearly inherited. Oh, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> when did you get into bow ties, by the way? Uh, when my father stopped going to shows. What, he like, left you the bow tie collection? I left me the bow tie collection. I've still got some of them now. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Just a carry on. Your Fox Terrier kennel is renowned for having produced a succession of, of top winners. Yeah. Um, and to students of pedigrees, when they actually look at Travella pedigrees, they are quite amazing because basically you have generations purely of your own stock. Yeah. So I'm assuming that um, you and presumably your father before you must have had very strong ideas about line breeding? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I think uh, that's the success of the kennel, line breeding. But it's over generations. I think line breeding cannot be done properly unless it's over a period over a period of time. I, it, the problem is you get people who try and think they can line breed and they want to do it straight away, but it takes years to uh, get these lines going. But obviously you've got a huge advantage because your pedigrees you you can look back for five and six generations and you personally knew all these dogs. Yeah. So you yeah. actually know what you what you're working exactly. with. Exactly. Yeah. I know. Yeah I mean you've had countless top wins with, with your your wires over the years. Um, are there any in particular that you know really sort of meant a huge amount to you? Uh anything yes, in particularly I was, yes I would say when we got reserve uh, Best in Show at Crofts. That was a memorable occasion. Who was that with? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. That's what I get cut. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, God. I, I can't remember. When was that? that? How many years <laughs> ago? <laughs> Five years ago. Right. I can't okay. remember. Well, then I, you've I, moved I, I, on to the is, next one. I'll tell you, I think the problem is, I've, I've been lucky enough since 19, 1990 when I was considering just concentrating on judging. I've had a champion for every year mm -hmm. since then. You've made up 21 champions. But I mean, today, um, your wife, Sue, who's always held a great interest in the kennel mm. and been something oh, well, of a, back, a, a backroom girl, well, oh, the, yeah. the dogs are now owned, pretty much owned by Sue. Yes. And um, you employ a young handler, I believe, or Sue does. Well, I call him my third son. Your third son. Yeah, because uh, my two boys aren't interested. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yes, he, he does a wonderful job. And we're, talk, we're talking of... Richard Allen. Richard Allen. Better uh -huh. mention his name. <laughs> well, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Talking of handlers and, and Richard, um, obviously there's been a lot in the press lately, mm. um, in the last few months, um, about the presentation of show dogs. Yes. And the application of substances. Yes. As a dyed-in-the-wool terrier man, what are your feelings on turning out our show dogs with the help of a, of a little product now and again? I can't see any problem at all. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's, it's a dog show and I can't see, in moderation. You can't go over the top obviously, mm -hmm. I mean you've got to draw a line somewhere but I can't so see So you share the opinion of a lot of, a lot of other people that um, you are doing your best to enhance your dogs rather than faking them. Exactly. And I think really, if you've got dogs that have got white leg hair, sometimes you do need to put a product in there because it's very difficult to keep them clean. Mm -hmm. And also when you're stripping a dog, if it's a hand stripping, you know, they need chalk so the co coat, undercoat is released easier. Mm -hmm. So you're bound to, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter what you do, you, you're going to get a, a residue of chalk in a dog, especially oh. with like Westies and, and wire fox terriers. Sure. Sure. I'm assuming that it was Wires was the first breed that you actually gave CCs in, yeah? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. then the other terrier breeds just sort of followed through eventually. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. And can you remember when you did your first terrier group? 1993. 1993. That was at Manchester. Uh huh. And then you've added breeds in the other groups, yeah. obviously, that have qualified you to, yeah. you know, to do best in show. Which when is we... very difficult because our system is quite hard, I think. 
I think it's the hardest in the world. Yeah. I mean, you're a man past 50 now. Thank you. And um, <coughs> um, how many breeds do you judge in total? I judge all the terriers. Mm -hmm. Six toys mm -hmm. and whippets. Right. But no, I mean, with our system, obviously, we have to qualify one breed at a time, and it yeah. certainly isn't easy. Well, I think it's ridiculous, to be honest with you. I think the system is crazy because technically I could judge, I do the toy group, I judge mm. the toy group, and technically I could be asked to judge the toy group it crafts. But there are, if I wanted to judge a certain breed in that toy group, I couldn't even get on a sea list and I couldn't do an open show. Yeah. And this is where the system falls down. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it needs to be looked at. Mm -hmm. Well, we, have, at. we now have a new chairman, so possibly things might be looked at slightly differently, hopefully. do you think? Hopefully, hopefully. Mm because -hmm. I mean, you're someone who was actually grown up surrounded by pedigree show dogs yeah um, and obviously over the years you you accumulated an awful lot of knowledge and hands-on experience um, whereas judges from other countries who may have come into dogs a lot later yes um, obviously gain approval to judge breeds a lot more quickly than British judges yeah so you've, you've judged a lot overseas though I have yeah mm -hmm. has that been restricted to the breeds that you do in this country I can only judge the breeds that I award CCs in this country mm. obviously yeah yeah uh, and it's, sometimes it is frustrating when you know uh, for instance I, I met a guy from abroad and he says I uh, it's taken me 10 years to become an all-rounder and judge every single breed and what did you say? It's taken me I 10 said, years really? to, to get, said, to get said, this particular Aren't you lucky? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's ridiculous. The system, it's, it's too hard here. Yeah. I think it's far too hard here. When did the invitation arrive to Judge Best and Show at Blackpool? When did the invitation arrive? Oh. About three years ago, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Were you excited? Over the moon. Mm -hmm. But it's funny, really, because it's like buses. You wait a lifetime. You wait a lifetime because, for me, this is the ultimate. Best in Show. Is for me, mm -hmm. it's the greatest honour I've ever had mm -hmm. in dogdom. And this is my, this is what I feel. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you get, uh, you wait, it's like buses, you wait for one and now I've got five lined up. So it's it's just wonderful, it really is. Well, and the first one's at Blackpool. And the first one's Blackpool. I gather you were quite excited when Steve Hall telephoned you to say that it was the first time ever that the best in show judge was, was going to appear on, yeah, the, on the cover I, of the show. Well, I was, I thought that, that was absolutely fantastic and yeah. I couldn't wait to get making, on the internet. Making history. Yes, and I thought, wow, this is unbelievable. So and were you impressed when you saw the photograph? Oh, very impressed. Um, have you got it? Oh, you got it there. And that <laughs> is the front cover of the 2011 Blackpool <laughs> Championship Dog Show, um, where the best in show judge, Bill Brown Cole, allegedly appears paddling in the sea. And Steve Hall told the world. Uh -huh. <laughs> Steve has a great sense of humour. Yeah. Yeah. So you're obviously looking forward to doing Best in Show this evening. Oh, I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait. It's what, are you, what, are you gonna, what are your priorities when you, when you judge in a variety situation and you're doing a Best in Show? Well, you're looking for the best of that particular breed. Mm -hmm. Plus? That extra charisma. They've yeah. got to have that little bit extra. That little something that makes little the little good ones that great. Makes great. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I, uh, there's one there for me. I'm sure there will be. I'm sure there will be. Hopefully you'll get seven that you like. Yes. Then that'll really make oh, it work. work. Yeah, then it becomes hard work. Yeah. You're feeling relaxed? Yes, I really am. Good. I really, yes, it's, uh, I really am. Okay. <laughs> You've mentioned a little bit about the judging system mm. uh, and the fact that we have a new chairman now mm. um, and things may be looked at slightly differently. Mm. Um, what about the you know the sort of the broad spectrum of, of the system as regards challenge certificate allocation and so on and so forth? Do you think that um, possibly the system could be tweaked at all to, to the sports it, advantage? I think I think you hit it right on the nail. I think it does need to be tweaked. I think, for instance, in my opinion, all shows should have the tickets they want, and if uh, if uh, shows want all the tickets, they can. They should be a lot, uh, given all the tickets. Being involved with the Terrier Group, I know that you've got sort of personal involvement with a lot of breeds who at some shows have, the, have just a single challenge certificate. Yeah. What's, what, what are your thoughts on that? I think it's absolutely ridiculous. You see, for instance, if you've got a very good dog and a very good bitch, it means only one can have the ticket. It's ludicrous, absolutely. Mm. And you'll find that people won't go. Mm. Mm. And I think it is killing the game. I also think going back to what you were saying with regards to CCs. 
if there's no CCs for me, there's no CCs at Paint, there's no CCs at Bournemouth, there's no CCs at Southern Counties, there's no CCs at Border Union, there's no CCs at Birmingham City, why do I need to go? And mm. in this day and age when we need the entries, and I'm sure I'm not the only person who thinks this, no, I'm sure this, is, this is why they should be allowing, it's a game, it's fun. But it should be. Yeah, it should be. And this is where I think the Kennel Club are making a mistake. So what else do you think that the governing body could do to encourage more people into the sport? I think, for instance, uh, three reserve CC would count for one. Mm -hmm. So it would, it would make people keener. They think, there's well, more of get, an incentive. There's more of an incentive. You'll get more people come in. And do you think then possibly the judges might actually attach more importance to, to the reserve CC? I think so. Mm. I'm sure they would. Mm. And I, I, I honestly believe, I, don't, I think in the past the Kennel Club have, haven't had the faith in their judges. And I think they think that they uh, maybe won't withhold. But I, I'm confident that if the standard's not there, the judges will withhold. Well, I mean, we both travel overseas quite frequently to judge there. And, and you know, we never think twice about withholding top no, awards exactly. overseas. And presumably, if there was a lack of merit here, we'd, we'd think the same thing. Exactly. 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 Anyhow, um, the hour approacheth. Yes, right. You're relaxed? Very relaxed. I'm mm. really looking forward to it. Okay. Well, I'm sure you'll go out there and um, be a great credit to the show and a great credit to British Dogdom. Nice talking to you, Thank Bill. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I'm speaking to Ted Eubank, who is one of the overseas judges at this year's show. Ted's come all the way over from the USA to judge Cavalier, King Charles, Spaniel, males, I think you did. I did, did I you? did, yes. Yeah. Where exactly in the States do you live, Ted? I live near Dallas, Texas. Uh-huh. Long trip? It was longer than it should have been. Yes, it was. Problems? Oh, a bit, yep. Uh -huh. yeah. A little bit of a delay. Yeah, the airlines didn't do well today. <laughs> yeah. Is this the first time you've actually judged the breed in the UK? I've judged open shows before, but it's okay. the first time I've, I've awarded a CC. Okay, yep. uh -huh. and did you enjoy it? Stupid oh, question, I know. Im immensely, yeah, uh -huh. I had, had a great entry, had mm -hmm. really nice dogs. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, my lineup was just what I would like to have seen. Good, yeah. Good. And I gather that the dog who won the challenge certificate under you, your co-judge, agreed that he should be best of breed. We did. Yeah, we ended up with that as the, uh -huh. our best of breed. So it's an older nice. dog, actually. Uh, Branwell? Uh, yes, out of the veteran class. Yes, yep. he, he goes on forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he... he, he he didn't look like an old dog today. No, no. no, no. He I, judged, I judged him two weeks ago, Did so you? I know how well he looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, how many Cavaliers do you keep at home? We've got 13 adult Cavaliers mm -hmm. at home uh -huh. and, and a litter of four babies right now. Okay, so yep. high hopes. Yeah, we do, yep. uh -huh. still. Yeah. So, um, I think it was three or four years ago, you showed a very beautiful Cavalier male under me at the um, the California shows, the, the Ukanuba. At the Ukanuba shows, yeah. And I think he won best bred by toy under me. He did, he uh -huh. did. It was, a, it was a wonderful day. It was a wonderful time yeah, for well, us, actually. He was a beautiful dog. Well, yeah. thank you. How, how do you feel he would acquit himself in amongst this bunch? I, I think his name is Rocky, and I think Rocky uh -huh. could compete around the world. Uh, I would have thought I do. so. Yeah. I would have thought so. But tell me, um, Cavaliers, unfortunately, have had a lot of negative publicity in this country over the last couple of years with various health issues. Yep. Um, have you had the same kind of exposure and media coverage at home? We have not had the media exposure that you've had here. I've seen it. You know, they've, they've actually aired some of the, the, the programs in, on, in the States. Mm -hmm. And we've had inquiries, but not an expose like the, that uh, Cavaliers were exposed to here. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So do you feel that the breeders in this country are addressing the problem as best they can? Oh, I do. Yeah, I, mean, I think, think people worldwide are aware of a number of health issues that Cavaliers have, but uh, I, I, in my time, in, in the years that I've been in Cavaliers, I've seen a great improvement in hearts, and, and that was the Achilles heel of the breed for so many years, but we're getting better and better. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a new problem crops up, I think good breeders will address it. Well, the responsible breeders don't want to breed unhealthy dogs at the end of the day, do they? Exactly, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting situation with your breed in, in the United States because, of course, for many years, um, the parent club did not seek recognition by the Ameri American Kennel Club, is that right? Yes. Um, and it was only until 
when, when were you actually first recognized? 1996 that the AKC recognized the Cavaliers as, as uh, brought them into the toy group. What was the big fear, do you think, of the breeders and the parent club about getting recognition by AKC? I, I know it, what it was. It was, it, it was Cavaliers were kind of under the radar in the States. Um, they, they were not immensely popular and only a handful of breeders, good breeders, were breeding dogs and we were afraid that uh, getting on the national stage in the AKC would, would bring in a lot of um, puppy mills, bring in a lot of unscrupulous breeders and uh, that was the fear. That was, that was why they, they pushed back against the AKC recognition for a long, long time. Right. Yep. But I think post-recognition, certainly the breed seems to have survived very well over there. Very well. And, it it and is extremely popular now. Um, Cavaliers do very, very well in the toy group. Mm -hmm. uh, they win their respective shares of best in shows all, all over the country now. I know that the opinion was expressed to me just prior to recognition that um, once AKC recognized them, the breed would be taken over by professional handlers and they'd get bigger and hairier and uglier. Um, but with my experience of judging them in the States, I, I don't think that's the case at all. As I think you have some, some very lovely Cavaliers over there. Well, I, I agree. Yeah. And I, as opposed to some of the other breeds, Cavaliers are still shown, I'd say, in the majority by breeder owner handlers. Sure. And sure. that's really nice that, that we still come together and, and compete against one another and that, that it is not a breed that's been totally overtaken by professional handlers. So you're leaving tomorrow, it's been very much a flying visit, you've had like 48 hours in the UK? It has been, but I'm so grateful to get to come and see this, this showgrounds, it's fabulous. I mean, the, the setup and the time it takes to, to do this, it's, it's just unimaginable. It's impressive, isn't it? It is, it is. And then to have, have the quality of dogs that I had to, to judge. It was, it was kind of a, a once-in-a-lifetime um, honor, Good. it truly was. Well, it's nice to see you over here, and we'd better get a move on because we now have to go and watch the Toy Group. Yes, we did. Judged. Yes, we did. Nice yeah. speaking to you today. It's nice to speak to you. Thank you for having me. A pleasure. We are at Blackpool Championship Show where we've enjoyed three fine days, and it's now spitting with rain. And I'm talking to Gail Wilcock, who has come all the way from Victoria in Australia to judge Rough Collies at the show. Have you had a good weekend, Gail? I've had a wonderful weekend, Andrew. It's been quite an experience. This isn't the first time you've actually judged a breed here, is it? No, I judged rough dogs at Lancashire and Cheshire two years ago. So you previously judged at a breed specialty, but this is your first all breed show? That's right, yes. What do you think of the layout of the all breed show? It's been phenomenal. I've never seen anything quite so big on an outside arena. And as far as your own breed is concerned, how did you find the roughs today? I was very pleased with some of them. Some of them were a little bit disappointing, I'm afraid. They need to give some thought to what they're doing with the breed. I think it's generally accepted that uh, rough collies at the moment are not renowned for their excellent movement. What would be your comments on collies worldwide at the moment in this respect? Well, I think probably if you're looking for soundness in collies, the best place to go would be America. Mm -hmm. they are, uh, they're more focused on that, but then they may be lacking other areas. I think um, Derek Smith, one of our great collie personalities in this country, he'd probably agree with you just having come back from the National Specialty. Yes, we, we've had a conversation today about it. He went to the National Show this year and I went last year. So we could compare notes. In Australia, um, generally in a lot of breeds, it's perceived that because the emphasis tends to be on groups and best in shows, that maybe you do insist on producing perhaps a better moving dog than some of the more specialist orientated countries. Do you think that's true? I think it probably is because the majority of the, our judges are not specialist judges. They are all-rounders, so yes, we are looking for something that's a little more sound. Mm -hmm. So how long are you staying in the country after the show? I'm here for another three days and I'll make the long journey back on Wednesday evening. Well, I'm delighted that you've had a good weekend, Gail, and uh, hopefully we'll see you back again soon. I certainly hope so, Andrew. It's been wonderful.